My name is Catherine Hunt, and I'm a genetic counselor. And I'm here to talk to you a little bit more about your cancer. And we're going to focus a lot on your family history, because I understand you're here today to learn more about why you have cancer. Is that right? Oh, I'd love to get that kind of answer of why okay. I have cancer. And then another, well, one of the biggest goals is given the cancer diagnosis, what does that mean for my daughter? What does it mean for my sisters mm -hmm. and all of my nieces? OK. Are you the first one in your family to have cancer? Yes, although once I was, uh, breast cancer, mm -hmm. although once I was diagnosed, um, I did find out that a cousin had breast cancer. Oh, okay. What we're going to do today is, again, focus on your diagnosis, first and foremost, since you're here to find out more about um, why you have cancer and whether it's genetic. Then I'm going to turn to your family history, and we're going to go through all of your relatives one by one, even the people that don't have cancer, because they're just as important. So today's session will really be kind of a, a risk assessment to determine the likelihood that your cancer may have been inherited. Perfect. Um, and then in addition to that, I'm going to talk about if it's not inherited, why you have cancer. Focus a little bit about that. And then also, even the fact that it's not inherited doesn't mean there wouldn't be a risk for your relatives. Okay. As you could move across the page to the right, I have your siblings listed in order from oldest to youngest. Your sisters first, then your brother, another sister, and then the youngest brother. Uh, again, you see the males are going to be all squares. Mm -hmm. Now, none of them have had cancers. If you step up above all of you guys and you go to the top of the page, you see the next generation. This is your mom and this is your dad. Um, these are their ages. Of course, you figured that out by now. And then what I've done here is just diagnose the ages that he had his diagnosis. He's the only one with any kind of con any kind of condition in his family. He's got a lot of relatives that have lived to be older than mm -hmm. 80, 90s even. There wasn't a lot of risk factors from his standpoint. And mm -hmm. His disease is probably just an age-related kind of condition, which we'll talk about later. Your mom's um, doing well at her age. You have the first cousin here on your mom's side. She's your generation, so if you can start to imagine generations, you have two women now with breast cancer, so you're not really the only one in mm -hmm. your family. You've got your cousin. She was young, like you are. Mm -hmm. And then there's a lot of going on with your grandma that I want to talk about, because your grandma's relatives had a lot of different kinds of rare cancers that are really, you don't usually see. You've got a great uncle that had a pancreatic cancer and a great aunt that had a stomach but remember back in that era, if you say stomach, it could have been colon, it could have been ovarian, it could have been uterine, because a lot of times people would really just generalize that part of the area of the body and not be that specific. Mm -hmm. So depending on the area, the time that they were diagnosed, it might have been a different kind of cancer, and people just remembered hearing stomach cancer. So now to understand what I saw now, I'm going to focus on your cancer, your cousin's cancer, and your grandma's relatives, as well as your uncle. So if I had 100 patients with breast cancer, about 80 of those patients are going to get breast cancer because of what we've termed sporadic natural causes. If you want to use that word for cancer, it doesn't sound right, but most cancers are related to age. There's very little genetics associated with sporadic cancers, okay? The one thing about sporadic cancer, though, that we know to be true as well, is that the onset of sporadic cancer tends to be later in life. So most sporadic cancers will affect our 70-year-olds, or even our 80-year-olds and 90-year-olds. Now, your cancer was at least 20 to 30 years younger than you would expect most people to have cancer. So you were in your early 50s. Mm -hmm. So I wouldn't necessarily say you're 100% sporadic, and you've had some family history. Now we're going to talk about these two kinds of cancers. One is termed familial and one is termed hereditary. Okay, let's go into the hereditary first because this has the most impact and implications to your relatives, your daughter and your sisters. Now hereditary cancers are believed to have caused 10% of all breast cancers. Hereditary cancers are due to an inherited genetic susceptibility and it's inherited either from your mother or your father and it's a very dominant gene. Inherited cancers occur younger, so the biggest characteristic of any kind of breast cancer which is related to something you're born carrying is age of onset. My own nature was to focus on my dad's side of the family oh, and really? it's you know the women live until their 90s so no worries and it hadn't associated the great aunts uh -huh. and uncles in the fact pancreatic cancer right. or stomach cancer might don't. be related. I had not made that connection at all. 
if you undergo genetic testing, you have to understand that what you're undergoing is a test that will reveal information about your mom and your dad's families and their background, and it will be something that you have carried from birth. And so the type of hereditary cancers that we've known about and described for the last 15 to 20 years are single dominantly inherited genes. So if you undergo a blood test to determine if you've inherited this, and that may be why you have your breast cancer, then you're ultimately also learning your mom has it. You're also learning or that your dad has it. You're also gonna be able to identify whether your daughter could have it and your sisters and brothers and nieces and nephews. Mm -hmm. So the blood test is really looking at something inside of your cells that you were given from your parents. And it's a gene that not to confuse the information here, but that we all have. It's a breast cancer gene. We call it the breast cancer gene, but the gene is present in every person you know and every one of you because it's there to prevent from get you from getting cancer. The purpose of the gene is good. It's meant to focus on preventing cells from turning to cancer. Mm -hmm. But when I am affected with cancer, if I have um, a cancer at 25 and I have a sister who had cancer at 35 and my mom had it at 40, there's a gene that's not working properly and that's because the gene's mutated. So the blood test is designed to determine if uh, the breast cancer gene, which everyone carries, is working or not working. If I'm understanding this, if we test me mm -hmm. and I have it, mm -hmm. then my daughter has a 50-50 chance. Exactly right. But that does not mean my sister or her girls have a 50-50 chance because you'd have to test her too because she may not have gotten the gene. Your sister will for sure have a 50-50 chance, but until we test her, we don't know what her daughter's chance is. Gotcha. So every sister of yours and your brothers both have all have a 50-50 chance because if you have it, your mom has it or your dad has it. And if, if, you, if that's the case, every one of them has a 50-50 chance. But until you test them, and you, you don't, don't know, know their daughters, their daughters and their or sons' sons. risk. Mm -hmm. Okay. The test is offered to you today for several reasons. One is to learn whether or not you may be at risk to develop a second breast cancer unrelated to this one. This is a new kind of cancer. This would be more likely to occur if you carry a mutation on one of these two genes, BRCA1 or 2. Mm -hmm. So when women carry these mutations, they are always going to have risks for developing future cancers so that it would be a new one. It's usually called bilateral cancer because it's in the opposite breast. Mm -hmm. It does not have anything to do with this one. So that likelihood could be as high as 60% to develop another cancer in the next five to 20 years. Mm -hmm. The likelihood for you to develop other cancers are also important because women with BRCA1 and 2 mutations can also get ovarian cancer. The genetic testing can provide some relief to people because they at least have an answer mm -hmm. for, you know, I've been healthy, I haven't smoked, I haven't drank, I've mm -hmm. been exercising, keeping my weight healthy, not doing, eating the stuff they tell me to avoid. Um, why did this happen? And that does occur a lot. And sometimes by having a blood test reveal that there is a hereditary component, there's this relief. Thank you so much. Oh, you're welcome. Did, any other questions or anything? No. This is exactly what I was hoping for. Mm -hmm.